Welcome back, Code Station 33. Uh, today we are going to talk about numbers and how they behave differently in computer science than they do normally in other languages. So, in mathematics, you probably experience some types of numbers that we call counting numbers um, one, two, three, four, five. Um, you might experience something that we call integers, which include negatives and positives, like negative 1, negative 2, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 0. And you might experience something that we call real numbers um, or rational numbers, which would include our decimals and um, any other kind of repeating decimal that we can think of or a decimal that just goes on forever and ever like square root of three those are all numbers that you're used to dealing with in math class the computer has one major major difference in the way it thinks i mean if we could say the computer thinks but you can think about an idea called infinity so when I start counting the stars in the sky, I can start at one and continue counting forever, for the rest of my life, uh, for the rest of my grandkids' life, and I can imagine that idea, that concept of just counting forever and ever and ever and never stopping. The computer does not have that ability. The computer can only count up to a certain number and then it has to stop. That's the highest value it can get to. And since we're dealing with Arduino, uh, some of those numbers are even lower. In order to set up the right size number, we have to tell the computer what kind of number we're talking about. So for example, if I want a counting number, like one, two, three, four, five, and maybe I want to include negatives, negative one, two, three, four, five, then I would talk about something called an int, I-N-T. And it's short for integer, so it's very similar to the math word integer, but it doesn't go on forever and ever. There's a limit. There is a biggest number that you can pick. And in most computers, it's 2 to the 31st. That's the biggest integer that you could possibly store inside of that computer. So when the computer sets up memory in order to hold a number, it sets up a box in memory that is big enough to hold that space. Now, if we look at our little Arduino, it has a limited amount of memory. It can't hold a tremendous amount of information. It's limited in the number of lines of code it can hold. It's limited on the size of numbers it can process. So if we were to try to put in something that was a bigger number, like maybe some decimals, uh, and the computer treats them as bigger numbers, even though they might be smaller, like 1.357825554321, dot, 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 that's a small number, but it has so many decimal places, the computer has to keep track of all those decimal places. And a computer doesn't care whether it's a big number and we're keeping track of decimal places or if it's a small number and we're keeping track of decimal places. That's really what it's keeping track of is digits, place values. When you have a uh, decimal like that, we call that a float. It's called a floating point number. And F-L-O-A-T is the command we use to identify that in our language. Now there is a bigger version of a float. Uh, in fact, if it's a box that's twice the size, we call that a double. Your Arduino is not going to be able to handle that. Um, your Arduino really can, at most, is going to handle some float numbers because it, it's a much bigger box compared to the box that is set aside for an integer. So when we are setting up uh, numbers, we have to tell our Arduino what kind of number that we're looking at. So we're going to start by just looking at some integers and doing some math and talking about how does the computer do some math on our Arduino. So we got a Tinkercad project here. I'm going to start a new circuit. And I'm going to drag in my basic Arduino we're going to switch the code to text. And we don't need any of this 
blinking light stuff. We're not blinking any lights. We are going to begin the serial monitor. Just like we have before. And now all I'm going to do is do some math. And I'm going to define an integer value y. And I'm going to define an integer value x. And all I'm going to do is print out the result of some math. So if I were to take x plus y, and run that on my serial monitor. You can see I get 12 over and over again. Now, it's giving me 12 over and over again because we're in that idea of the infinite loop. So we could put an exit in there if we needed to, but we, I don't think we really need to. So I'm gonna hit stop. So we have addition, we clear this, we can do subtraction. And in this case, it should give us a negative number because we are subtracting a smaller minus a bigger. So we get our negative 8. And we can do multiplication, which is an asterisk symbol in code. Uh, it's a, right above the number 8. And if you press the shift key in the number 8, you'll get to the asterisk. Let me clear this. Start my simulation. And look, there we get 20. And then division. Now division we have to be careful of because right now the only division we can do is of the type uh, integer division. And we're going to talk more about that in the next lesson. But right now I have to focus on answers that I know are going to be uh, evenly divisible. In other words, the number I'm dividing into the numerator is a perfect factor of the numerator. It divides in evenly. So when I do that, I get five. So all of that works. We just showed addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. One of the things that we have to know is that the computer follows what's called PEMDAS. So if I were to do some straightforward operations here, let's say five minus three plus two, the computer is going to do addition and subtraction from left to right. Because PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, I'll put that up here in a comment. Follows the order of operations of parentheses first. So if anything that's done in parentheses gets done first. Then exponents are done next. Multiplication and division are done together in order from left to right. So if division comes first, the division is done first. If multiplication comes first, the multiplication is done first. So it's left to right. And the same thing with addition and subtraction. They're done oops, in order from left to right. So in this problem here, the computer is going to do 5 minus 3 first, even though I know PEMDAS goes addition and subtraction. We talk about that as one unit, addition, subtraction, left to right. So it's going to do 5 minus 3 first and get 2. 2 plus 2 is going to give us 4. Let's just verify that. And you can see we get 4 over and over again. You might see on the internet sometimes people, they ask those questions about, you know, what is the correct way of doing something. But if I do something like this, 5 minus 3 times 2. If I put the parentheses in, the computer is going to do the 5 minus 3 first, which is 2, and then times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, so when I run this, I should get 4. And I do. But what if I were to take out the parentheses? This is the part that throws people off a little bit. They get a little confused because they're so used to reading everything left to right. But really what the computer is going to do here first is take the 3 times the 2. And it's actually a negative 3. So the answer is going to be a negative 6. Then it's going to do 5 minus 6 and get negative 1. So the order of operations is going to say, hey, do the multiplication first. That comes first right here in PEMDAS. So we should do that first. And then once we get that answer, we should subtract that answer from 5. 
So when we run that, we see we get our negative one, which is what was expected. Uh, I've seen people get this wrong answer where they'll do five minus three still and get two and then do two times two is four. That's not correct. It's very important to realize that we have to follow PEMDAS and do those operations in order. Another good one that I see all the time that kind of messes people up is if I do something like 15 divided by 3 times 2, right? So again, people would um, look at PEMDAS and say, oh, multiplication comes first. And they would do 3 times 2 is 6, and then 15 divided by 6, which is going to give us some kind of decimal number. But that's not correct. The computer is going to look at multiplication and division at the same level. So the computer will first do 15 divided by 3 and get 5, and do 5 times 2 and get 6. So when we run this, um, and we do our answer, okay, 5 times 2 is 10, right? So 15 divided by 3 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. I think I might have said 6, but I meant to say 10. 15 divided by 3 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. So we have to make sure we're following what the computer does. If we did this in parentheses and force the computer um, to do the multiplication last. Actually, let's make it do it first. Right? Force the computer to do 3 times 2 is 6 and then do 15 divided by 6, you're going to see that we're going to get a totally different answer. So we get 2. Wait, 2? Well, that's not right, right? We're going to have to talk about that because 6 does not go into 15 two times. It goes into 15 two and some change. Hmm. There's something funny going on there. Definitely something we're going to have to talk about in the next lesson because the computer doesn't look at this division symbol like you look at it. You would look at the division symbol and say, Oh, it's going to give me a decimal answer when I take 15 divided by 6. The computer does not look at it that way. We have to do something special to tell the computer that we want the decimal answer. And we'll go into that in our next lesson. So we're going to do some practice math and see what you have learned. And I'll see you next time.